Conservative leadership candidate Peter McKay's visit to Thunder Bay was greeted by a protest organized by Fort William First Nation and Nishinaabe Ashke Nation. About 150 people were on scene for the protest. They police closed down Bay Street, and this is a move where protests in or Thunder Bay are now starting to take to the streets. Here is our coverage, complete with the interviews with Chief Collins and NAND Grand Chief Alvin Fiddler. Grand Chief, can you uh, tell us why you're here today? Why was it important for you to uh, you and Chief Collins to come out in front of the uh, Peter McKay meet and greet? Well, I think we need to send a message to uh, Peter McKay that his uh, hateful rhetoric uh, is uh, is harmful. It's uh, irresponsible and. Uh, it's something that we all need to stand up against. Are you hopeful that he'll come out and address you guys? I know he's going to hear. I know he's hearing about this now. So, if he hears it personally or by <laughs> social media or by media, I think it's important that he hears this message. How concerning is it to you <clears throat> to see that you know political leaders aren't? seem seemingly too concerned about tweeting what Mr. McKay did and what others have mm -hmm. tweeted and, and you know it seems to be pivoting further and further. Well I mean social media is a very powerful tool and uh, um, even if you delete your tweet you know five minutes after you tweet it it's still out there and uh, uh, I think what he said in those uh, tweets uh, is wrong and, and he knew he was wrong that's why he would that's why he deleted them and I think for a guy who was uh, running for uh, the leader of his party, potentially the next prime minister of this country, uh, we can't have that. We cannot tolerate that kind of messaging from someone like Peter McKay. What is the messaging you want to see from leaders like Peter McKay? Sorry? What is the message you want to hear from leaders like, from leaders like Peter McKay when in situations like this across the country? Well, I mean, any relationship uh, has to begin with respect. And it should be on that basis that he speaks to uh, the leadership that, uh, you know, he knows about, he's been a justice minister before, he's been the attorney general before, he knows about the treaties, he knows about the issues of this country with respect to indigenous peoples, and, he's, and his rhetoric doesn't reflect that. His uh, campaign manager has apologized for the tweet about uh, going to the gun range and everything at his church. Do you accept his apology? It's very difficult to accept those types of apologies because, you know, the first time you write something and you put it out there, you know exactly what you're doing. You know, I have Twitter, I have social media. Whenever I write something, I read it twice before I press that button. So these guys know exactly what they were saying. It's just when they're called, called out on it, that's when they start deleting it. And to me, that's just not acceptable. How reflective of of it is it, do you think is it for the rest of the country and for people? Sorry? How reflective is what his comments were in? Is that of the... Yeah, I, I, I can't answer that, but, you know, but for someone like Peter McKay to uh, spew that kind of rhetoric is dangerous and it uh, empowers people to, you know, feel and act the same way. How concerned are you then that, you know, when you hear the rhetoric coming out of some government, not government officials, but elected officials, you know, just come in there and, you know, basically, you know, to these protests and things like that and, and uh, uh, you know, basically bulldoze them down. Well, I mean, this kind of rhetoric that Peter McKay and his staff have uh, put out there, it emboldens people to do the same thing and say the same things, and, that, and that's very dangerous. What do you think of the turnout here today? It's great. I know there's a lot of interest uh, out there, and uh, I think it's, it's really good to have Chief Collins here uh, and other leaders that are, will be here uh, in the public because, again, it's not just uh, an Indigenous issue. It, it should be an issue for all of us. That anytime someone uh, you know, promotes uh, you know, hate, hateful rhetoric, uh, we should all be concerned because, you know, as a father of two children, I think about my own, ki my own two kids, and I don't want any form of violence to be targeted at them. What are community members been saying about that stuff they've been the case at? I'm sorry? What have community members been saying about that? I think we're all concerned that someone like Peter McKay, who's uh, seeking potentially uh, you know, uh, the 
leadership of his party and potentially the, the prime minister of this country, uh, you cannot, we cannot tolerate, we cannot tolerate this kind of behavior. Shifting gears for a second, there's been another apology from uh, the senator <coughs> for Northern Ontario. Do you accept that? Uh, I think, you know, I, I, I took time to listen to her apology, the tone of her apology, and it just wasn't sincere at all. Uh, and I'm really glad that the Senate this afternoon took the steps to suspend her again because she doesn't belong there. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Collins, why, why did you feel it was important to join uh, this silent protest here today? Well, I think it's very important to get our message very across to this uh, uh, PC candidate that thinks he's going to be the next PC candidate to, uh, to in the federal election. You know, I think, uh, you know, violence is not a way and the message that he come across on his Twitter and, his, and on his Facebook accounts is not a way to, to resolve in our issues. And I think, uh, you know, you keep, keep those comments in your background or in your mind, but not on the forefront of, uh, of your leadership uh, campaign. Are you concerned, I guess, that this is normalizing those sort of sentiments and, uh, you know, it could be, because we are starting to see, you know, a little bit more uh, violence or, or anger towards uh, these protests? Well, you know what, I, I think that's a wrong message to send. I think we're, we live in a society that wants to be better and we all want to have good, strong relationships. And, you know, those kind of comments don't help that cause. And I think we have to work together to make this country great again. And, uh, you know, what? This new, uh, the possibility of him leading this new uh, 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 PC candidate or the PC party in the next federal election uh, will really not help his cause or the cause for Canada itself. Are you concerned with the rhetoric coming from the right then that, uh, you know, that that seems to be their way right now? Well, it seems to be their way and I don't think it's a good way and, uh, you know, it doesn't cause any more uh, better relationships. I think the, it'll be a failed relationship uh, as we go forward. But uh, for all of us in our communities, we want a strong, good, partnering relationship with Canada and whoever leads this this country. In the uh, in the OIPRD report yesterday, it said Thunder Bay Police are making progress. Do you think maybe the PC party could, or the Conservative well, party could learn from maybe, that? Maybe that's a good learning curve for them because the, the police are making progress and I, and I have good relationships with the police and I continue to work with them and change in the landscape in this country and in this community for all of us. And I think the PC needs to learn from that and take that, uh, that mindset and move forward with it. The, the rhetoric that's been coming out, uh, it's, do you think he's just trying to sell memberships to red meat to his... Well, I, I think I think he wants to, he really wants to be the PC leader. So I mean, he's going to do whatever he has to to to, to get that seat. And I think you know that rhetoric that he's putting out there really uh, spells hatred and animosity. And and, I, and to me, that's really the wrong message that needs to be sent to all Canadians. Is that going to play east of maybe the Manitoba border, though? I mean, well, <laughs> I don't. I, I think it'll play right across the country and right across the lands that uh, we all occupy here in. Uh, you know, uh, th this is not a good way to start uh, uh, a relationship, and that that's my message. Uh, we need to work together to make this country great again. I mean, we've committed our lands and our resources, you know, and we're only trying to, to benefit from that, and I think that's the message that he needs to understand and get clear in his head. If you found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share this video, and keep up to date on what's going on.